<laughs> now's not the time to. Uh... <laughs> I've had, I've had a couple of friends that are in log home business or whatever come in and just embarrass the snot out of them to have to sit down and just start talking, you know. <coughs> we're, we're rolling. Go ahead. Hey, folks, this is Sam Satterwhite, the old man at Satterwhite Log Homes. And this is July the 30th, 2019, and I had a couple old buddies happen to drop by the office in uh, Longview uh, a few minutes ago, and I want to introduce those guys to you. I've got Sean Stafford over to uh, the far left there, and then David sitting in the middle. I know that I've said this before, but one of the neatest things about our business is the fact that uh, we get an opportunity to build a relationship with people that we work with, that we sell to, or that we buy from. And this is a perfect example of this. I've known Sean for a number of years, known David for a few years, but they are the owners of uh, Aspen Wallwood Incorporated and Aspen Wood Products uh, in Dolores and Mancus, Colorado, which if you're not familiar why. That's over in the uh, 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 far southwest corner of Colorado, uh, you know, real close to Utah, Arizona, just north of New Mexico. They're west or, no or slightly northwest of Durango and just right up the road to the uh, northeast from Cortez. Beautiful country, Mesa Verde. Uh, uh, well, it's just wonderful country. You need to visit there sometime. But, but uh, their main mill is right up the road north of Mancus toward Dolores, which Dolores, uh, Spanish sadness, mm -hmm. isn't that what that means? So. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it, it is, it's so neat whenever you know folks that you're working with and buy from and develop friendships that transcend the business aspect of of doing business together. Now, going back in some, some history, in 1977, uh, September, uh, in fact, Satter White Log Home started handling Aspen paneling, which, which Aspen would, uh, from you know going across Colorado and the Intermountain West, most of you know what Aspen trees look like, the white bark trees with the, with the kind of quivering uh, leaves that are absolutely beautiful in the fall. Uh, most folks up there call them quakies because the appearance of the leaves shimmering in, in the breeze. But uh, I don't think there's any prettier place in the world than uh, Colorado the last week of September, first week of October when the aspen are, are turned and, and beautiful. But aspen wood has some other uh, wonderful uses other than just the beauty of the trees. And these guys take it, take a lot of advantage of that. All right, back to September 77, we started handling aspen paneling, which uh, to a lot of folks you don't realize when I'm talking about paneling, I'm talking about lumber that's tongue and grooved. It's a common uh, phrase in our industry to call it paneling when, when we're not talking about four by, sh four by eight sheets of quarter inch thick, cheap, cheap, cheap plywood with an imprinted face that, that most folks call paneling. This is really, really paneling here. But uh, Aspen, uh, I have no idea how many millions of board feet of it that we have handled and installed and sold over the, over the decade since 77, but it's been an awful lot of, a lot of footage. All right, what these guys do, and it's super neat, is that they've got one business that, that saws up uh, aspen trees into lumber and makes this beautiful paneling. Uh, then they got another business down the road that makes uh, Excelsior. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean on David to uh, explain what Excelsior is and what the process is that, uh, that you're making. When we, uh, buy, when we buy a timber cell with aspen, uh, typically aspen is cut 
every tree to two inches and larger has to be cut. Five in inches and larger has to be removed from the forest. We can only use a nine inch tree, uh, which is DBH uh, diameter or breast height is a typical uh, term to make any of our paneling products. Uh, so those trees that are logs that are five inches to the nine inches, we have to do something with those. They're taken into our mill and make us. We dry those. Um, it takes about a year to dry the, the log dry enough to be able to make the Excelsior. We cut it into eight, 18 inch blocks and then they run through a machine that's a, an Excelsior machine that essentially grinds the wood, uh, similar to a giant cheese grater, I guess, uh, that makes wood fiber. Wood fiber, then we bale it. Um, we either run it into products for erosion control or into bales that go. we ship to companies that manufacture something out of it. Uh, the typical Excelsior gets shipped uh, to companies that make cooler pads, swamp cooler pads, real common in the drier part of the U.S., in our part of the country for coolers. Um, it's used for packing material. It's used for um, uh, all knick-knack type, uh, hobby type uh, material. Easter baskets is a real common use. Erosion control use. Aspen has some really nice qualities in it that it absorbs water and it releases the water without molding, uh, which is one of the advantages in the paneling product because it doesn't shrink and swell like a lot of other lumber will do. It holds its shape really nicely once it gets up on the wall. On the Excelsior side of it, you can use it for water uh, erosion and absorption without uh, having molding and, and other issues. Neat. Uh, how long have they been doing Excelsior, uh, Sean? Yeah, but you got, before we started rolling, you guys were talking about equipment back in the, how far back in time? 1865, I think. I believe that's the uh, patent. Well, I think. But it may go back further than that, Sam. I don't know. All right, and, you, and, you'd, and you'd said that uh, uh, the other term for Excelsior is what? Wood wool? Wood wool. Wood, wood wool. wool machines. And that, that, that's, that, that's European. Uh, but, you know, for a long, long time, people have been using wood fiber uh, uh, that's, that's basically sh shredded wood uh, lengthwise down the, uh, down the uh, tree uh, to make something uh, that occupies a lot of space. And then, of course, Aspen are talking about putting that, in, that into pads for cooling towers, for swamp cooling, coolers. And I, I, I tell you, it's funny, uh, here in East Texas, of course, you know, you just drove in and you sweat all the time, uh, real high humidity and high temperature too. When I was a kid growing up, we had a swamp cooler uh, at our house here where you take already 80% humidity and then you pass air coming into the house through a swamp cooler that's wet the the pads didn't didn't mildew, but everything in the house did because you raised the you know it cooled the house, but still the humidity was up there in the 90 95 percent range anytime you were running that swamp cooler here. Of course, in dry parts of the country, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, you know that's a that's a staple for air conditioning. Simple way to simple way to do it is you is you have a a, a swamp cooler with aspen uh, pads pass uh, air through it while you're pouring water through it and the evaporative effect will drop the air temperature 10, 15, 20 degrees uh, at you know, very efficient air conditioning. Um, well, I might, add, I might add, we just got a customer this last week, a company in Mexico that, uh, that fishes for lobsters or collects lobsters. They take the Excelsior, they, they soak it in water pack the live lobsters into the soaked Excelsior, and then they ship live, lo live lobsters. Neat, for neat. So, that, you know, so there's just a lot of uses for this. Well, you, I, I tell you what, you need, to, you need to ship some samples to Boston because <laughs> typically you know, the way they pack uh, lobsters there is in seaweed. Mm -hmm. So this, this, uh, this will probably save them a bunch of weight in shipping and be a heck of a lot cleaner product to, to pack their lobsters in. Than, than, the, than the seaweed. The, the, uh, it, it's so neat 
uh, I, and I'm, I'm sentimental and I, uh, I'm big on relationships. But you know, Cider White Log Homes, our forte is harvesting dead trees uh, to make our house logs and our other products. Well, these guys are doing uh, a lot of the same thing. Aspen, as beautiful as the trees are, are a, a, almost a nuisance in a lot of the Intermountain West. Uh, Aspen will take over, uh, and, and something kind of neat about it, you see what Southerners would call a grove of, of trees. Well, it's, t it's actually a clone of Aspen because they're all interconnected in a group uh, through the root system underground and a new aspen will grow from the roots of another aspen. Mm -hmm. and, and so within a grove or a clone, the genetics are exactly the same from one tree to the next. Is that That's right. not right? When they start uh, changing colors in the fall, that group of trees will change colors at the same time. And they'll all be the same color. I've never, I never noticed that. Yeah. Never noticed that. that. And you know, down here, our uh, uh, sweet gum is some flavor of cousin to your aspen, and in the poplar across the uh, uh, the Midwest and the uh, northern part of the South is a close kin to your aspen right. uh, uh, that you have in in Colorado, and in fact, the wood from the poplar and and uh, sweet gum looks a lot like aspen. Let me show you. Let me show you some of the products that these guys are making for us. All right, this is a one by eight tongue and groove uh, aspen board. They make us one by eights, one by sixes, and one by fours. Here are one by fours, and uh, whenever we need some of it, they'll even do us a, a, a different pattern from this that's beaded instead of V-grooved, and we can get a center bead in it also, typically used for wainscoting in a, a bathroom, down a hall, uh, dining room, kitchen area, and then here's one by six uh, tongue and groove aspen, and I say tongue and groove is tongue and grooved and V grooved at the edges. Uh, uh, we have we've used one by six, bought more one by six from these guys than the one by eight and the one by four put together by by far. The one by six extremely popular in new home construction. And if, and if you look at any of the interior pictures of Satter White Log Homes, there's a high probability at least some of the ceilings or walls that you see are going to be Aspen from Aspen Wildwood Incorporated in uh, Dolores, Colorado, no matter where the houses may be. Now, right now, we've, we have been shipping several houses to uh, New Zealand. And with, with, those, with those packages, Usually we're putting some tongue and groove in, going all the way to New Zealand, uh, but but your products have gone literally all over the world, from our warehouse either here at, at Longview or uh, Gunnison, Utah, or L. J. Georgia, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm proud of that relationship. Now these guys have gotten into something uh, that I'm really happy about the last couple of years, and that is uh, blued ponderosa pine. Now this is, this is something that uh, really gets to me because of the similarity of what these guys are doing for the blue pine and we do with the dead spruce. But the blue pine, uh, uh, this is ponderosa pine, a western species that uh, uh, areas of it get killed just like the spruce does, whether it's by, uh, by beetles, uh, by forest fire, by whatever, but but whenever whenever that ponderosa pine dies on the stump, that's still uh, it's still a standing tree. Uh, it gets uh, well. Let me last see you. You tell the story of of, uh, of what happens to get the blue in. Well, on the the ponderosa pine that we have right now, they're being attacked by a various number of beetles, but they're a round-headed beetle, the, the western pine beetle are the two primary beetles. They carry a fungus, it's called a blue stain fungus. Um, they bore through the bark into the cambium layer of the tree, they lay their larva, and they also excrete this fungus into the tree. This fungus spreads 
it goes into all of the, the straws, there's a term in the tree, through the, into, into the tree, up through all the live portion of the tree, out into all the branches, and it essentially plugs up the tree and the tree dies. And it's in the tree's effort to protect itself or preserve itself, it pushes all of the pitch or sap out of those holes, those beetle holes, so when you walk up to the tree, it's just a giant pitch-pocked tree. It's, it's, it's kind of funny looking, uh, but the tree dies within. It starts fading. The needles start fading within about three months. The larva goes around the inside of this cambium layer of the tree, um, eating that. And then, of course, when they mature, they become beetles. They come back out of the holes. They fly to the next tree and kill then that tree. They literally kill every tree in the stand you know, as far as their flight can take them. Uh, right now, I believe that the Forest Service um, in the San Juan Mountains, um, there's some, somewhere in the neighbor of 20 or 30,000 acres of dead ponderosa pine trees. Um, within about uh, nine months, this tree will be as blue as this is from this blue stain. Once the tree dies like that, the blue is set into the grain of the wood. So when we harvest it, the center part of the the center part of the tree, the, the hardwood part or, the, or the, the core part of it does not blue. All of the live wood does blue, so depending upon you know, how big that uh, center is, uh, depends upon the, the degree or various of the, of the blueness in it. Once we harvest, all the bugs are out of it, and, uh, and you know, it makes some really gorgeous, gorgeous paneling with a lot of character. And you know, not too many years <coughs> back, you know, the bluing, uh, it is a defect mm -hmm. for structural uses. But somebody got smart enough to say, that is so beautiful, that we need to take advantage of that characteristic. Uh, in in uh, Trevanda and I built a Lone Star model uh, that we lived in starting in 1982 is when we built it. And about, and I, I hate to tell you this, but but the master bedroom was a vaulted bedroom, and the ceiling in that bedroom was aspen. All right, in 83 or 84, we had an opportunity to start handling some blue ponderosa pine. And so that house right now has a, a, a blue ponderosa pine ceiling, and if you tear that down, there's a beautiful aspen ceiling <laughs> underneath, underneath that. But we were using that house as a model home, and want to show off the blue. And we had aspen all over the house and other places, so why not cover up one room of it? That, uh, let, me, let me show you, everybody. Uh, this is what the boards would look like without the blue stained fungus like this. And, and uh, aspen wall wood is producing some white or unstained uh, Ponderosa pine paneling for us also, not just the blue, but I'm, you know, I'm tickled that we can offer both of those products from Ponderosa pines coming from the Four Corners area of, of Colorado, as well as, as the Aspen. And I'm going to brag on your business. Uh, I mentioned that we started handling Aspen paneling in, in September of 1977, but, uh, uh, we had a hard time getting enough of it to, to take care of our needs. The market, we quickly uh, 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 had outrun the supply, and we just couldn't get enough, couldn't get enough, couldn't get enough. Our first aspen paneling came from a mill that's no longer there over at South Fork, east of you guys, east of uh, uh, Wolf Creek Pass and Pagosa Springs. Uh, they made nice, nice paneling out of aspen. Couldn't produce enough. Another mill, maybe in Colorado, maybe someplace else would produce aspen. Quality was always a problem in manufacturing aspen. You guys know better than anybody the, the difficulties in drying aspen lumber properly, keeping it good and straight, and then doing a, a quality job of, of the milling. Uh, uh, it, it takes an eye for quality and a determination to do everything just right to make good quality aspen. Well, over those 
years in the late 70s and early 80s, we were buying Aspen from uh, the Great Lakes region, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Uh, there's a lot of Aspen up there, but the, the problem was most of that Great Lakes area, Aspen, has very little of the mineral streaking like uh, Rocky Mountain Aspen does. The character is what makes it. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, with, without having some streaking, some knots, some color in it, it's just a bland, nearly white wood yep. that doesn't get your attention. Okay, in the mid 80s, a couple of old guys named uh, Willard Walker and Dudley Millard uh, started making Aspen paneling. They had, they had a mill there since sometime in the 70s, and this is there at, uh, at Dolores. And, and uh, we were fortunate to be the first customers of Aspen paneling that, that Willard and Dudley produced. And, and so immediately we were a, a very important customer to them. And that has carried on through uh, uh, another set of owners. And now Sean and David own the operation and, and we're proud to, uh, we're not partners, but we're partners. We're customers sure. of theirs uh, and, and we do a lot of marketing. If, uh, if, if someone were to call uh, the mill office right now and want to buy a bunch of Aspen paneling and was going to go to Texas or Arkansas or Louisiana or wherever, well, they're going to turn around and send them to Cider White Log Homes mm -hmm. because we sell uh, an awful lot of their product uh, for them and for us. It's a very good symbiotic relationship, uh, and I, I hope things don't change for a long, long time. Uh, I'll add us too. We're, we're very <laughs> we're very happy with her. Thank you, this thank is, you, David. This is a good, thank good you, David. Relationship. Um, okay, if you're if you're traveling in a Four Corners region, uh, you drive up Highway 184, isn't yep. it? Uh, from Mancus up uh, up toward Dolores, you're going to see the Aspen Mill off on your right there. Uh, these guys don't mind if you stop by and look around. Just don't uh, don't slow the work down while you're there because they're producing too much paneling that we need down here in Longview, Texas. All right, down in Mancus, uh, they have that Excelsior Mill, and I haven't had a chance since you got it going to visit. But I'm hoping in the next month or so to be up there to visit you guys sure. and, and, and see that operation. It's, it's, it's so neat when you can utilize all of, of something that God created for us to use. Mm -hmm. and, and, and by having uh, different sizes of, of lumber products you make, also having the Excelsior plant to, to use the, the crooked, the undersized, the oversized, the whatever, that doesn't lend itself for making lumber. Uh, that's uh, you know that's doing away with any waste. Yep. You use it all, use it up. That's that's what conservation really is. Mm -hmm. Is a wise use of of, of what we've been blessed with. Um, okay, Sean, anything you want to add other than that's a good looking cap you got. I had it in the, this afternoon's the first time I saw one of those. That's for Aspen Wood Products, the Excelsior plant. But if you go back in my office, you'll see uh, uh, Aspen Wallwood caps and yeah. notice his shirt there for Aspen Wallwood. Uh, anything you want to add, Sean? I don't. David? Only to thank you, Sam. Appreciate the opportunity. And, and we, we, we have a, you're a very important customer to us, and the relationship is equally as important to us as, as you described it already. So we appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. We are uh, we're buddies as well as doing business, and I love it like that. Thank you, folks.